What is going on everybody? About three weeks ago I released a video about all armor sets in God of War Ragnarok. Link in description. While I was talking a bit about different builds you can create using different armor sets, the purpose of it was to set the foundation for the builds, which is a next layer. So now it is time to talk about builds themselves. Specifically, I will be talking about end game builds that you can use to clean up the last bits of content in a new game and take it into a new game plus when it arrives. So availability of the items won't be taken into account. While I will be showing all the items I personally used in the build, I want you to treat those builds as ideas you can use to create your own builds suiting your own playstyle. If you have a build you really like, or if you create one after watching this video, stick till the end and I will tell you how to nominate your build to Community Build Awards. The winner will get a small prize and tons of respect. I am gonna jump straight into OP Glass Cannon build. There are two main variations of this build used to dispose of Gna and Rolf. One with Lunda Wrist and Waste and one with Vidar's Wrist and Waste. I personally don't like the Lunda option because it relies heavily on Freya's Runic Summon and outside of this window it is kinda pathetic, when a combo with Vidar set packs a decent punch regardless. But I actually wanted to pull your attention toward the third option, Guiding Light. This combo probably doesn't go so crazy in Burst Window after activated Talisman, but it is way more consistent. You won't get the crazy strengths of Vidar set or extra 40% damage against poisoned enemies of Lunda's set, but what you will get is a chance to deal more damage with explosions and much more damage from the Vanaheim set since it scales with luck. But what is very important, since your main parameter becomes luck, you get the luminous recovery handles and weightless recovery cell rotter to help recover talisman and bring forward your next burst window. This is what makes this build so distinctively different, allowing for more consistent damage output. Quick walk through other items. As I already mentioned, luminous recovery handles and weightless recovery hand are great options. Stats are good and both will help to recover talisman much faster. For the axe I personally like the runic knob, it provides good stats and because I also use Muspelheim enchantment set, uh, it will give extra boost when the perk procs. Handle of 9 realms is also a solid option, but otherwise it is just for stats. For the shield, two best options are Dauntless Shield for cooldown or Onslaught Shield for luck. Choose the one you prefer more. For shield upgrade, I would highly recommend Round of Expedition for even more cooldown reduction for your relic. Classic relic for this build would be the Amulet of Main for max burst damage output, but I personally prefer Hilda of Harfund for the realm shifts. Field of Scuffling also could be a decent option because it can pin down your enemies. For enchantments, Vanaheim set is pretty much non-negotiable. I'm using a Muspelheim set because it's a nice and easy damage buff. Since cooldown is a somewhat secondary stat, the Asgardian set is a valid option as well. In the last three slots I have Sigil of Doom, in this build it's non-negotiable as well. Crazy damage boost, I also have the Emblem of Nine Realms because of Hilton of Hoffund, but obviously if you are using different relics there is no point in this one. Last one I just used for the stats. Without going too far from the Berserker set and has a squishy build but with a different flavor. I know a lot of people like the Gyptomander chest plus Berserker wrist and waist combo and to be fair I tried it and it worked quite well. But I'm still going to suggest to pair Berserker wrist and waist with spiritual chest if runic spam is something you're after. So the idea is simple yet very devastating, you use 3 runic attacks of your choice, this boosts your melee damage by insane 45%, 15% per attack, ideally you use 1 attack from each weapon, in this case it also triggers Bifrost Storm from the enchantment, what would be insane not to include in this build, after that goes Relic, again I really love Hilt of Hofund, but in this case I actually think it is the best option for the build. 
during the realm shift you need to hit with a fully charged whiplash attack as many times as you can first of all because it does really high damage second because you want the luminous recovery handle on blades to trigger blessing of cooldown a couple of times when Realm Shift is over, you fight normally, you can try to get a couple of more replashes, but it's not that important. You leverage the Round of Expedition, which gives a boost of cooldown when you parry or interrupt the Blue Ring attacks. Berserker Wrist and Waste will assist even more with lengthy Relic Recovery. Once the Relic is up, you repeat, and if you do everything right, you will have a tremendous uptime on Arcane Strength and Bifrost Storm. Really powerful build, I honestly get tired a little bit of it, but I think it could be something to do with me and the runic attacks in this game. For stats, the highest priority is obviously a cooldown, luck and runic are secondary. For axe and spear handles, choose whatever has relevant stats and suits your playstyle the most. Dauntless shield is pretty much non-negotiable, and shield upgrade has already been mentioned, it has to be the round of expedition. For enchantments, as I already mentioned, the Bifrost Storm enchantments is absolutely great, and if you follow my suggestions and use Hilt of Hofun, Emblem of Nine Realm will give a lot of value as well. Since cooldown is the main parameter, the Asgardian enchantment set is must-have. For the second set, I would suggest either the Vanaheim set or the Midgard set, and the last slot is filled in with whatever you want. But enough with this glass cannon nonsense, let's say you are after more forgiving, easier going experience where every mistake is not as severely punished, where you can play a bit less careful and see the death screen much much less. Well I'm glad to say that I have two great options for you. First one is the defense oriented build using Stainburn, Karas and the Raven Tears Wrist and Waist. I was only suspecting it's going to work but recently I finally tried and it was great. In this build you can easily raise your defense stat over 600. This stat alone makes Kratos very tough, but increased healing from Raven Tear set plus retaliation from Stainbjorns brings survivability to absolutely another level. It may seem like this build may fall short on damage, it's actually not quite true. There could be a bit of a problem with bosses, yes, but thanks to Stunning Fang enchantment the damage is not a problem at all on the regular encounters. With all that defense and Svartalfheim enchantment, the enemies get stunned real fast, and with decent lack stat from Raven Tears items, Stunning Fang will proc a lot, dealing extra damage and increasing your strengths. Quick walk through the items, I have chosen Dauntless Shield because of personal preferences, but objectively I believe Shutterstar is the better choice for this build because of spear minigun and more stun damage. For round I'd personally go with purification, this build has a very low vitality which means that status effects gonna hurt. On top of that is the rare round with strengths to mitigate some damage issues a little bit. Bartholfheim and Niflheim sets and Standing Funk pretty much must have enchantments. Last two slots and all the handles I use just for the stats. Relic doesn't matter that much, but I would go for Mutsugnir Skull for the full stun damage build. And I would strongly recommend Hell's Touch and Leviathan Roar for Axe Light and Heavy Runic Attacks, respectively. Those two dealing the massive stun damage. Alternative route to survivability is Tough Guy Vitality build. It is built around Soul's chest piece that increases damage based on available rage and consumes rage on taking lethal hits. It is the highest vitality set in the game, so it obviously synergizes very well with Jotunheim enchantment set to increase rage pool and Helheim set to increase damage when you are below 50% HP and it actually scales really really well. Being below 50% HP may not sound like a very good idea, but not for this build. First of all, being at 50% in this build is not too far from being on 100% in the build with low or no vitality. Second of all, even if you drop to zero, you will consume rage instead of dying, and thanks to Jotunheim's set, you will have this in excess. You will find this set provides a great balance of survivability and damage, and unique playstyle, so let's quickly go through the items. 
Saul's chest remains the heart of this build. There are two main options for wrist and waist. You either go with Saul's full set. This will give you top vitality, but then your rage gain will be based on getting hit. You also will need to boost luck a little bit. The other option is a fate breaker wrist and waist. Those increase your rage gains and are second highest vitality stat in the game. You also can mix those as you want. Vitality stat is not the easiest one to get in this game, so I would strongly recommend to stick with Stonewall Shield and Round of Restoration. Hilt of Typhring is an insanely strong and underrated relic in this game, but it shines in this build the most. It does insane damage in area and with cooldown stat as low as 35, level 3 Hilt of Typhring will cool down only in 31 seconds. That's actually insane. Of course, it comes with the cost of sacrificing your own health on use. It is still pretty good if you have at least a bit of vitality, but it, in this build you can just use it as a regular relic. In fact, it can be very good if you're doing no damage runs and want to trigger your Helheim enchantment set. I used Bannerhawk knob and the pommels of agile deceit just for vitality stats metal scarred sarauder is the top choice not only because of vitality but also because of perk that gives rage burst and stand grabs there are some things you need to know about it it only works when the spear is in your hands and when both is losing portion of their hp instead of providing ability to stand grab it actually considered a stand grab and it will trigger this ability this burst also scales with fate breaker set as I already mentioned before, Helheim and Jotunheim enchantment sets are mandatory for this build. Last three slots you can use for whatever you want, I use them just to bump vitality even higher. We're about halfway through the video and if you are still watching please consider subscribing to the channel, it helps a lot. Now what if you are after an experience where you're more focused on reactive gameplay, punishing enemies and bosses after executing a perfect counter? Well, I could not not mention currently my favorite build I created for my personal style, Lucky Repost build. If you want the full guide, I will leave the link in the description, but here is a short summary. This build is specifically designed to extract maximum value from your block and parries. Husk Chest will provide a chance to trigger defense repost on block or parry. Berserker Waste provides the chance to trigger Soul's Explosion, dealing damage and refreshing relic on block or parry. Nine Realms Run will give you a chance to trigger round shift on parry that will make repost even more devastating, especially if Emblem of Nine Realms is equipped. Guiding Light Set and Onslaught Shield are there pretty much just to boost your luck. I use Hilt of Hofun because I like it and also because it gives more value to the Emblem of Nine Realms. Runic Knob for the Axe to boost Runic, Empress Handles to boost Strength and Hint of Weightless Recovery to boost Relic Recovery even more. For enchantments with all that luck, Vanaheim set is kinda non-negotiable. For the second set, I use Muspelheim set because it allows me to keep Immolation Permafrost up without losing too much damage. The reason why I want to keep those up is that this increases lack stat as well, so it helps triggering all lock abilities. Another good option will be the Niflheim set because thanks to Haskaraz, this build has a solid defense stat. I also use Emblem of Nine Realms, Sigil of Doom and the last one I feel just for stats. Great build, quite balanced on defense, I absolutely love it. So if parry is your thing, go and check it out. But what if parry is not your thing, what if you are more of a dodge person? Here is your Radiant set. The problem with Radiant set is that it has no survivability whatsoever, and because you will be aiming for those sweet last second dodges, the odds are you will be screwing a lot. That's a recipe for a lot of death and very hard learning curve. Fortunately, closer to the end, the game gives us the perfect tool to make the Radiant set more friendly. Surgis Caress. It's pretty solid on defense and vitality, and perk increases your damage when you attack enemies in the middle of their attack. Perfect match with Realm Shift triggered on dodge. 
All of these gives perfect foundation and the rest you can tune with other equipment, whether you want to go more offensive or defensive. I personally went the more offensive route, but ultimately it is your call. For enchantments, the Alfheim set is an obvious choice, same as Emblem of Nine Realms. Second sets should match whatever you choose for a secondary stat. Nivelheim if you double down on defense, Muspelheim if you want more runic, or Vanerheim if you want to add some luck. Ron and Shield do not matter much for this build, so choose whatever you prefer. I went with Shutter Star Shield here. If you decide to go for luck as your secondary stat, it is worse to use Round of Nine Realms for even more realm shifts. Though if you do not bump your luck stat, it doesn't worth it. I went with Furious Mole, Deadly Obsidian Handles and Hint of Four Winds to double down on strengths and to make those Alphine strikes even more devastating. But again, check on what exactly you want to extract from the build and choose accordingly. For me personally, it was the only way to play the game in the Radiant set, trying to learn the timings and not to see the load screen every bloody minute. And another tip, you do not necessarily need 1.75 second realm shift, you can swap one of the items for something else. For example, swapping braces for Vidar's one will give a solid boost of damage. But what if you want a more balanced experience? What if you want to have a runic attacks powerful but not completely overshadowing other mechanics? What if you want to put Immolation Baron Frost to good use as well? What if you want to be aggressive and deal decent damage but maintain a safety net in case you make a mistake? This is a new thing I tried and I actually was very satisfied with the results. I combined Undying Pyre's Wrist and Waste for runic stats and emulation gains with Dragon Scale Chest to boost strength and defense. Result, very aggressive build. You are constantly charging an emulation permafrost bar using runics and activating glacial permafrost. Blocks and berries boost your defense and strength, so you are motivated to play more and more aggressively. I used all the nine realm hints uh, pretty much just for fun, and, but it's actually a very suboptimal choice. It compromises too much on strengths and it's absolutely not needed. Make sure you pick something that gives you more strengths than that. I picked Round of Absorption for even more emulation gains and don't lose shield just because I used to it, though I think the Shutter Star Shield will make the perfect choice here as well. For enchantments, the only two really matter, it's the attuned runic gem in this build it, that has tremendous value and kinetic resistance that will help to boost emulation gains even further and not to drop it fully on mistake. I used the Muspelheim and Niflheim sets because I had solid defense and runic stats, but feel free to experiment with those. Still not sure? Here's the bonus 8 idea, try out survival set and all the basic stuff if you didn't do it yet. It has a very balanced stats that will make every tool in your disposal effective, but not overshadowing. It will give you decent survivability. If you somehow haven't tried it yet, please do it. Have some fun and as you do it, you will spot your tendencies to use one or other mechanics more and will be able to start adjusting your gear to your own playstyle. Okay, the God of War Ragnarok Community Builds Awards, let's try it. Here are the rules, post your build in the comments, you don't have to be subscribed though it is very welcome. Minimal requirement is all armor items, shield and weapon upgrades and necessary enchantments. The more detailed the build is the better, feel free to add a couple of words on the build idea and how to play it. Oh yeah, and start with the flesh and aim. If we can get at least 5 builds by the end of the weekend, I will test 5 to 10 of them on Muspelheim Trials where you have to kill 99 enemies and on either Na or Hroth. I will compile all of it in the video with some of my thoughts about the builds. I will release this video with the community poll sometime next week. And after the next weekend, the one with the most votes will be crowned the winner.
The winner gets the small prize and the respect of the community. For the prize, I decided to give away a displayed gift card. This is not a paid advertisement, though I wish it was. I personally have four of those in my room, bought with my own hard-earned money. I think the product is quite cool, while it may be a little bit overpriced. Shouldn't concern you though, because the winner will get one for free. Check the displayed website to refine if it delivers to your location. Though, who cares about the prize when you can get the respect? And this is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, all the stuff, and see you in the next video.